Good morning, everyone. I have a very COVID friendly uh, live stream topic for today because it's actually something that we have more opportunity to do right now, arguably, than at any other time in our lives. And this is what, now stay with me. As soon as you hear this, don't go, nah, I'm not up to that. What, what we're going to talk about and maybe practice and learn, uh, strive for today is earthly to heavenly and heavenly to earthly travel. Now, what does that mean? There's an idea that's out there that there's a number of heavens and that the last heaven, the seventh heaven, if you will, or in some theologies, the third heaven, is pure, unutterable light and God presence. It doesn't go into words. It is something more pure and perfect than a place where the streets are flowing with milk and, and are made of gold and flowing with milk and honey. No, better than that is this pure white light of the seventh heaven. Some traditions say that Moses permanently lives in the sixth heaven, just because he, he also couldn't go to the promised land of the Bible. So the, <laughs> the tradition is we don't let him into the seventh heaven either. But I've been thinking more than ever about heaven. Um, I, I'm, I already err to the cosmic side of things. I know that it's part of just how God's shaped me and kept me alive longer than I expected. So I talk a lot about heaven because I kind of traveled that direction and came back. But when I talked about this pure, white, perfect light, some people thought like, yeah, that sounds familiar in a weird way. I know that that's the ultimate. But a lot of people got upset. They thought, if my former dog that gave me 18 years of pure, unconditional love, if that dog's not going to be in heaven, I don't want to go there. Well, cheer up, folks, because that's one of those levels of heaven thing. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind, none, zero, that God knows that about you and knows about your love for your pet and that somewhere along the way, you're going to see that pet again. If that's how God best says to you, I love you, get ready for that visit. And that pet might come to you even tonight in your dreams or this afternoon in a nap. Let yourself think that, hmm, that is a little glimpse of heaven. So what I'm inviting everybody to do is do some heaven traveling today in a way that you are totally comfortable with. Let your own standard be your guide. Don't be bothered by whatever, you know, your friend who talks to Vishnu 24 hours a day. That's their path. Ask yourself what you're capable of doing, though, to step into timelessness, to step out of earth time where you're trapped in your house and you're worried about does your mask work or do you have the cheap kind and is it safe to go to uh, Target or is it not? And these, these worries, you need to be appropriately cautious, but then we need to just also put them to the side, let them sit and say, hmm, what can I do that's joy filled? And you have an opportunity. Ask yourself what you're comfortable with. Some people are no more comfortable about the topic of heaven except to maybe look through old photographs of uh, parents, grandparents, great grandparents and see their story. But ask yourself, are you able to even say, express gratitude for that grandfather and say, thank you for all the gifts, all the love, all the eternal beauty that you taught me, that you reflected from heaven to me. Can, do you have enough faith in God that if you say, thank you, God, for this relative, you think you'll be heard? If do, if you do have that faith, say so. Just something his family picks. Another option, we baked a loaf of bread again last night at Supper Song and Prayer, which we hadn't done for about five weeks. And just the very smell of that, you can go, mmm, there's a little bridge there between earth and heaven. A loaf of bread is not all earth. It's not just all from the ground. A loaf of bread gets made from ground, but also by invisible things like air and sunlight. Well, that's visible, of course, but you've got to think less materiality all merge and become a loaf of bread. It is not a coincidence that in a lot of sacraments, including in Christianity, bread is used because people with eyes to see, see in a loaf of bread, earth and heaven. Today, as part of your travel between earth and heaven, let yourself be more conscious of that if you have a bite of bread today or if later in the day you might have a sip of wine. 
let yourself be greeted by all the heaven and earth, everything that is wine, water, a vintner's skill, everything that comes to that. And then see if you're not finding something that's eternal in also what is earthly and finding that bridge again between earth and heaven which you can fully do. There are no COVID limitations. This is a huge vein of silver, a, a great big wide silver lining that you would have more time to do this and more time to think about it. Um, we've talked before about talking to relatives in terms of doing shadow work and saying, oh, I forgive you for this, I forgive you for that. But you can also take it to another level and say, dad, mom, uh, grandparents, great grandparents, beloved, first grade teacher who I know, I knew, I knew when I was in first grade she was an angel, I still know she is. That person that has ascended whatever level of heaven they're at, maybe you can say hello if you're comfortable. Now, let me be clear, a lot of people think, oh, that's black magic and talking to the spirits of the darkness. No, don't talk to the spirits of the darkness. There are such things. Why would you seek that? What need for control? What wrong-headedness, what neurosis would so desire that our tiny little selves be totally in control that we, um, we seek the advice of dark forces or others who are still in their own hell? You, you following me? So um, I mention this too because uh, I have another opportunity for you that you have that you can do with your mask on or safely at home over the phone or texting me or even by email, and what it is, is this set of cards that I made in seminary at the advice and instruction of a very famous Chinese Christian theologian named Kwok Pui Lan. And she was pretty amazing. She taught this spirituality class, which was like the hardest class to get into seminary because 13 seminaries were in Boston and we all had reciprocity. And so everybody wanted to take Kwok Puilan's class. I had to beg my way in because it was already filled. Anyway, Kwok taught us about ancestor cards. And so you have to read them backwards when I go like this, right? But they say all sorts of different things. One is joy. One is work. There's one that says love. That's a pretty big category. Listening. Anyway, the idea of these cards is, is that you prayerfully, you meditatively get in a quiet place and you think of your most beloved, the, the relatives who have passed, but you felt like understood God the most, understood love, were the wisest. The people that had traveled to the heavenly side of things, even frequently while on earth. And wisdom, beauty, and truth was often flowing to them and through them. That's what you're looking for, is that relative who is departed at their one level of heaven, whatever level of heaven they're at, where they're still with dogs or it's pure white light, they're up there somewhere. So ask them to say, what do I need to be more conscious about? Give me a word. There's two kinds of readings of that, sister. A single word or three words. And I can put the ball out on the table. Again, I can do it over the phone with you. Here's, here's the thing. The better you believe it's possible, the better it works. Jesus would science instantaneously heal people, and other people, he had to try two or three times. The ones where it was instantaneous, Jesus didn't go, God, I am so cool. I'm amazing. I'm so blessed by God. I have gifts. No, Jesus always said, your faith has made you well. The Roman centurion said, you don't need to come see my daughter. Just pronounce her healed. That was the Roman centurion's faith that empowered the whole thing. Jesus knew that. It's not about Jesus. It's about this collective faith and love. You with me? Okay, so back to ancestor cards. These will work if you think they will. If they don't, please do not call me. And please do not call and tell me why this is biblically incorrect. You're going to lose that argument, trust me. <laughs> and if you want to be right about something wrong, you especially don't want to call me. So thank you. Um, Ancestor cards are there. Give me a call or a text or something. I'll gladly do you a one card reading right now if you'd like. Is somebody, um, yeah, great. So I'm seeing some people already say, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that and that'd be uh, my blessing. But back to the macro topic, 
today in your meditation, in your waking, your sleeping, alone or with others, in your house, walking around, shopping at uh, um, Smith's, whatever it is, look for the miraculous. Look for the heavenly. Look for the timeless. When you're in the produce department, look at your favorite piece of fruit and say, I know what a mango looks like, but I'm going to let God show God's self more than ever in this beautiful mango. And even a mango can be a huge reflection and demonstration of heaven, right from its beauty that will get soft and rot someday. There is an eternal beauty and an eternal gift, even in that. So let's be of that mind today as much as we want and really enjoy it, because this I promise you, when you look for heaven and timeless beauty in things, you will see it and you will always feel good about it and feel blessed by it. All right, that's what I've got to say. Oh, I have been asked to end with an ad and a reminder that this Saturday, at, which is the 4th of July, at the Epiphany Episcopal Church in Las Vegas, the corner of Cactus and Gillespie, in our very parking lot, the uh, Committee on Gratitude has made these nifty, now, so you're seeing it backwards. You have to read right to left like Hebrew. Um, it says, engage in generosity. For those of you who don't read backwards, who are less dyslexic. <laughs> Epiphany Episcopal Church, Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's cool. And now, when you come on Saturday, someone will clean your car, stick this on there, and give you an American flag if you wish. And we're going to have like a little parade right in the parking lot and celebrate all the heaven that we see in this earthly, wonderful country that the United States is. All right, now I'm done. I love you. Talk to you later.